Okay, so now that we have our virtual box loaded up, you should see no virtual machines here. You should just have tools. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding our virtual machines. We're gonna start with the easiest one, which is gonna be the Kali Linux machine. So we're gonna go to tools here. We're going to add. Now it's gonna ask you to navigate, navigate to that file location where you put all the different files. So what we're doing, we're looking at a lab file. I have that 2024 lab file here. And I'm gonna open up that Kali Linux folder. After you've unzipped it, you make sure to unzip it first. Once you've unzipped it, you have Kali Linux VirtualBox. Should have a VirtualBox machine definition if you download the correct one. Remember, you wanna download VirtualBox right here. And this is the file that you're gonna unzip using WinZip or 7-Zip. And then you're gonna load that here. So we're going to hit open. And now we see our Kali Linux machine right here powered off. So let's go ahead and start that machine. We're going to start this Kali Linux machine. It's going to be a brand new Kali environment uh, updated with the latest version. There's a couple different things you want to, we're going to set this up here. So a couple things to keep in mind. Whenever you click in here, it's going to capture your your mouse, your keyboard. So you're going to have a host key to uncapture your mouse. Make sure that host key makes sense for you. I have mine bound to right control on my keyboard. That's something I don't click on a regular basis. You can change it at any time. And it's going to ask the first time you load up the machine to uh, understand that it's going to capture your mouse. So don't make sure you don't have your mouse stuck in your virtual machine. I'm going to click do not show this message again. Just make sure you understand that your mouse is being captured. So my mouse is being captured. See, I can't see it. If I hit right control, then I can get my mouse back. But otherwise, I don't have my mouse here unless I go your virtual machine reports the guest OS supports mouse pointer integration. I got that. Close that out. My mouse is captured there. Okay. So only if I hit uh, right control am I going to get that back. So I load it in here. It's captured. Now you can change that. You can change that through your input here. You change your keyboard settings. Host key combination. You can change that right here. Okay. So there's all options here to change these various settings and you can set up shortcuts here so i do recommend taking a look at that as you start virtualbox your input preferences because sometimes you'll need to input a control alt delete so for me i have that as host plus delete makes it easy for me uh, or control break maybe not so much but this one definitely you want to have this map to a very useful or quick to find a keyboard shortcut because you, you're going to have to do control at least, especially for Windows devices. Okay. All right. But now that we're in there, the default username and password for the Kali machine is Kali with the password being Kali. Super secure, but we can change that. But this is a lab environment for testing purposes. It's not a big deal. So now we get the cool Kali background, change the backgrounds every once in a while. And this is gonna load up Kali. We can adjust this. And when we do that, it should automatically adjust the window. So we can adjust the file or the virtual box window and it should be dynamically set to um, adjust our desktop here. Now you can set up different preferences too for how you want it to display, okay? So I have this set up to maximum guest screen size automatic. And that's gonna let me do that rescaling. It's gonna only rescale to a certain point. So you see, I can't make it too much bigger than this. I'm just wasting space. That's the maximum display size, but I could adjust that if I want. This is plenty big enough for what I'm doing. Okay, so you also wanna make sure you check your network connectivity. 
we could either set this up as an isolate environment or we can set this up to have access through our uh, network interface card. So let's just go check website connectivity. Looks like everything is working. Has connectivity through our network device. So that's fantastic. And if we want to change that, we could change that as well. We go to machine and settings. We go to network. Attached to NAT is fine. Uh, we can also have this attached as a bridged adapter. Now, we, since we want this to connect to our other devices here, instead of attaching this to network address translation, where it's going to be assigned an IP address, I'm going to do it through a bridged adapter. Okay? And I'm going to have it bridged through my network interface card. So if you want this Cali machine as a standalone machine, treat it as a new device on the network, you can set up NAT. But I'm gonna set this as a bridged adapter, and that's gonna allow me to, um, to connect with other devices in the same network, okay? So we can check now. Let's see if we still have internet connectivity. You have a couple different uh, settings down here too. You got your mouse icon, information about the about if you're recording, about your disk usage. And you see that this has kind of broken our connection here. We have adapter here. And it's going to treat this as if we have this like a bridged local area network. That's fine for now. We'll come back to this uh, because what we want to do is we want to be able to connect this to our other devices. Okay. If you at any time you want to go back to just having this Cali machine be able to access the internet, you just go to your settings and go to network and change that to network address translation. All right, but right now. We have it as a bridge adapter. I also want to put allow uh, VMs or allow um, all for promiscuous mode if I want to use this for like wireless scanning. So I'm going to do that. Then we're going to hit OK. And right here you have, you see indications about this. We have a wired connection because it's treating the bridge connection as a wired connection, not a wireless connection. Then we have our connectivity there. Okay, so now we have our Kali Linux machine up and running. It's working correctly. Now what we want to do is we install our Windows Server machine. Now if you look at your lab files, <clears throat> you don't have this type of definition file, VirtualBox machine definition, for the server machine. All we have in IS is an ISO uh, machine or disk image. So we have to do, we have to create a new virtual machine so we're not adding this time we're going to create new so we create new and now we choose the operating system okay so we're going to go ahead and we're going to select a folder where we want to put the machines and i'm going to choose the same lab folder here I'm going to label this 2024 virtual machines. So 2024 lab and 2024 virtual machine. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to select that folder. Now pick a folder where you can, you can have some storage space. Okay. Because otherwise you know, this can quickly eat up a lot of storage space and you don't want to, you don't want to eat up too much. You don't want to put it on like your C drive or a drive where it's going to fill up quickly. You want to put it on some a drive where you have, I'd say probably 60 gigabytes of space. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this here. I'm going to label this Windows Server 2022. This is going to be the name that appears. And I'm going to pick here, Microsoft Windows, I'm going to pick the version. So on this drop down list, I'm going to go down. We don't have Server 2022 on here. So I'm going to pick other Windows 64 bit. Other Windows 64 bit. We have Windows 2019, but we don't have other. So I'm going to pick other 64 bit. I'm going to go next. So I'll pick about 4,000 megabytes. Recommended hard disk size is 20. Okay. So what we're going to do is here, we're going to create a virtual hard disk. We're going to create one with a size of 20 gigabytes. And it's going to create in that virtual machine folder that we created earlier. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a virtual box disk image. This is going to make it so it's only usable by a virtual box. If we wanted to, we can create a virtual hard disk so we can export, but just leave it by default. That's fine. That's going to be allowing virtual box to use that disk image. If you want to transfer this, use like VMware or another utility, you could pick virtual hard disk, but we're not going to do that. And then we're going to pick this as dynamically allocated. So it's only going to use or fill more space as that space is required with a dynamic allocation. And that's what we want. And we'll go ahead and leave that at 20. 20 gigabytes, and that should be in our 2024 virtual machines folder. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. Okay, so now that we've created our Windows Server machine, we have that virtual machine listed as one of our VMs. We're going to go ahead and start that up. Okay? We start that up, we're going to be prompted to select a disk image. Now, if you accidentally exit, it should give you a little prompt asking you to select the disk image. If you X out of that, my mistake, don't worry. Just right click here, choose or create a disk image. So now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna add, we're gonna navigate to that lab file, the lab folder where we put all of our lab files, the ISO files, and we're gonna select our server valuation, the server, Windows Server 2022 ISO file. It's a disk image file. We're going to hit open. Okay. Now we have that. We're going to choose that. And then we should be able to boot up our disk. Now, if you're, sit, if you're here, you can always reset. So if you're having trouble there, we just hit that reset button and then it starts loading up our Windows Server. So we've added that server ISO file to our Windows Server and now we're basically installing Microsoft Windows Server 2022. So let's go through those steps and I might skip through this depending on how boring this is. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install this. You have to go through the full setup. If you ever wanna not see an image again, just click this at the top. Now there are a couple uh, things to understand here. We have server standard evaluation, desktop experience. I'm gonna pick desktop experience because I wanna have uh, graphical interface. Okay, so not just standard evaluation, but standard evaluation desktop experience. Agree to the terms. All right, so here I have 20 gigabytes and that's gonna be the disk space that we allocate for the virtual machine. We're gonna hit okay. Oh, we do need to make a new partition here. This is al unallocated space, so we have to make a new partition. Apply fine. So now we have a partition. And from that partition, it's going to install all the, the Microsoft files there. 
So basically now we've complete the installation process. You're gonna to have to at the end, select your language, and then you should be able to start Windows Server 2022.